Now that we've set up our Google site, the next step is to add content to it. This can be a little confusing if you haven't used Google Sites before, so we're going to go through a couple different ways to add information to your site. We've set up our title and banner at the top, and now it's time to add the content underneath. Unlike Google Docs or Google Slides, you can't really just click here and start typing. What you need to do is add an object to the site, and there are several ways to do this. The first way, and the way I use most often, is using my Insert menu over here. On the Insert menu, I can choose a text box, images, I can embed code, or add something from my Google Drive. I also have things like layouts underneath, which are some pre-made templates that I can use to make things look really nice. And if I scroll down, there are other options, including things like collapsible text, a table of contents, a button, a divider, YouTube, map, calendar, all of these lovely things that I can add. Most of the time, I'm going to use either these tools right here at the top or the layouts underneath. The second way to add items is to come over here to your blank space and double click. That will pull up the wheel. And on the wheel, you have the same options pretty much that we have on the right for our basic things we can add. The T is for the text box. This little red box is your image box. The yellow brackets here are our embed tool. We have our Google Drive option, and we also have the option to upload. If you have something saved on your computer that you want to upload to it, you can click here to do so. So if I click on text box, it's going to go ahead and add a text box on my page with my formatting tools at the top. So up here I have things like my title, my heading, subheading, small and normal text, my bold and italics, my alignment tool, I have my two types of lists, numbered and bulleted, insert a link, clear text formatting, and my trash. And that's where I can get rid of a text box if I don't want it. My three dots here give me a couple other options. These aren't ones we use very often, so we don't have to worry too much about them. I can simply start typing in here. And now it's on my site. These dotted lines only show up for you when the site goes live for other people. You won't see them. Those are just to show you where your different sections of your website are. If I have this selected, if I have my mouse hovering over it or I've clicked in it to work on something, I'm also going to see some other options over here. The trash can lets me delete this whole section. If I decide, nah, you know what, I don't want this, this section here, I can click trash and get rid of it. These two pieces of paper are my duplicate. If I want another section almost exactly like this one, I can click duplicate. It makes a second one, and I can go in and make changes. The third option is this little paint palette up here. And this lets you change the background of each section. There are not a whole lot of choices, and these will change depending on what theme you're using. And we'll talk about themes in another video. But we have regular, we have emphasis, which kind of shades it just a little bit. And then we have the second emphasis, which is usually a different color. Your last option is to add an image, and again, you can upload or select an image just like we did for our banner up here at the top. With your other options, they work pretty much the same way. I can add an image, all of this good stuff, but I also want to show you how to use the layouts because I love the layouts. They're an easy way to make my website look really nice. So let's say I want to add some pictures with captions underneath them. I can go to this layout right here, drag it over, and say, oh, I want it right under there. 
now I have this nice section where I can click on the button and choose what I want to add to it. I can use an image. I can upload something, grab something from Drive. I can add a YouTube video, a calendar, or a map. So I'm going to go ahead and select an image. I'm going to go to Google Image Search here, and I'm going to search for a Bengal cat. All right, there's a Bengal cat that I like. I'm going to click Insert. And you'll notice that when you use this little template, sometimes your image gets cropped, so parts of it don't show. If I double click on the picture, I can come in and use the handles to adjust it. Sometimes, sometimes that doesn't let me do it. Um, and if that doesn't work, I can move it around. So maybe I want to make it so I can see his head. The other option I have is up here, which is the uncrop button. If I click on that, it will adjust the image so that I can see the whole thing. You may or may not want to do that depending on how you want your site to look, but if you want to make sure you get the whole picture, use that uncrop button. Then underneath, I have my little text box and I can type in what I want. As I'm creating my site, one of the really neat things about it is that I can move these sections around any way I want. If I come over here to the right, it's a little hard to see, but right before I get to these three tools, there's a little handle. When I put my mouse over it, it looks like the four-way cross here, and I can grab that and move it. So maybe I want it right below the welcome and have the wee underneath. So I can move all of these pieces around and put them wherever I want them on the website. So all of this is a really simple way to add your content. Next, we're going to take a look at how to add more pages to our website. But before we do that, I want to show you one last really, really important thing. When I come down to the bottom of my page, this little button is going to pop up that says Add Footer. And this is where I've seen so many students run into a problem. When you click Add Footer, it gives you a box to type in. And a lot of times, students will use this, type in all of the stuff they want on their website, and then go to add another page. The problem with that is that the footer is something that goes on all of the pages on your website. So if I put information here in the footer and I add a new page, that same information will be on my second page. If I change it on the second page, it also changes it on the first page. So this is not for your content. This is just for some other information. Sometimes people will put copyright information, author information, contact information. I'm just going to put bye. Ms. Martin down here at the bottom. And when I make new pages, this footer will show up on all of my pages. If I want to go back to editing my regular page, I'm going to click up here where it was gray, and now I can go in and continue working on my site. But make sure that whatever you put in the footer is something you want on every single page, because you can't have different footers on different pages.